Today we're going to be talking about the three types of percentage problems and how you can solve all of them using a double number line. A double number line is quickly becoming one of my favorite tools to solve these problems and I'm going to show you how it's actually really easy to set it up and then see the answer just from organizing your information. Every percentage pro problem has three parts, a whole, a part, and a percentage. And in every problem they're going to give you two of these three and then ask you to find the third one. So let's start off with a type of problem where they give you the whole and the part and you have to find the percentage. So an example of this might be something along this, these lines. Jesse has 40 candies. She eats 10. So she eats 10 of them, they're gone. And then the question might ask, what percentage of the candy has Jesse eaten? So you're going to set up your double number line like this. So draw your straight line, draw your two end points. And the beginning of the double number line on the left side always starts at zero. So on the top, zero candy. On the bottom, zero percent. On the other end of the double number line, you're going to put 100% because that is your total. And if you look at this problem, they also give you the whole, right? So we have a whole in part. The whole here is 40 candies, so we also know that at this end of the number line, we're going to have 40 candies. Now what do we do with this piece of information that she ate 10 of them? Well, we can break up this double number line into pieces that show 10 at a time so we can easily subtract um, the 10 from the 40 pieces of candy. So let's see, 40 candies, we know she's going to eat 10 of them, right? So we'll break this 40 into four parts. So we know each of these is 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. Now, if she's eaten 10, we're not going to use this 10 over here. We're going to go back from 40. She's eaten 10. So now she's at 30 candies. Well, how many has she eaten in percent, right? We want to know what percentage of the candy has she eaten. Now from 100, to this point here, do we just subtract 10? Well, no, right? Because there are four markers and they add up to 100 on the bottom. On the top, the four markers add up to 40. On the bottom, they add up to 100. Now what's 100 divided by four? 25. So we put 25%, 50%, 75%. So you see now the bottom is broken up evenly into four pieces, just as the top is broken up into four pieces. And we also can see that from 100 to 75, that is minus 25%. So we know that this 10 candies is 25% of all her candy. So that's one where we have a whole and a part, and we have to find the percentage. Now let's do one where we are given the whole and the percentage, and we have to find the part. So let me erase this down here. Okay, here is a, another problem. There are 60 robins, code <laughs> robins, I like those birds. There are 60 robins and 5% of them are baby robins. And then the question would ask, how many baby robins are there? And that's the part. So we have the whole, we have a percentage, and we have to find the part. So again, we just set up our double number line. Remember in the percentage side, we have 0% to 100%. Now, do we know what our 100% is here? Yes, we know what our whole is, and the whole is always equal to 100%. That is 60 robins. Robins. And then, do we know our percent? Yes, we have our percentage here. 5% of them are baby robins. So let's just put that down, right? We're going to estimate. 5% is like very low of a percent. We're going to put it very far near the left. 5% are baby robins. So now what we're trying to find, and whoops, I forgot to fill in a piece of information here. The starting point is zero robins. What we're trying to find is how many robins is equal to 5%. Now, on the last double number line, we broke it up into equal segments so that each one was worth a certain amount and we could just count back. 
Here, however, it would be kind of tedious to break it down into like 5% all the way up. So what we're going to do is see how we got from 100% to 5%. Now there are a couple ways. You could either subtract 95 or you could divide by something. If you subtract by 95 from 100 to get to 5, that's going to make it a little tricky because you're not really sure what number corresponds with that 95% to get from 60 to whatever this missing number is here. So let's do division, because division, we can do the same number on both top and bottom. Multiplication and division work like that. If you have a double number line, you can do the same number, multiplying or dividing, on both top and bottom, and it will bring you to the same point. So 100 divided by what is 5? 100 divided by 20. So let's do that same operation here. 60 divided by 20 is 3. So we've got, there are three baby robins. Nice. Okay, so that's how we do the whole and percentage find the part type of problem. We fill in all of our information on the double number line, and then we can use an operation, either multiplication or division, to get from 100 to wherever the percentage was, and then do that same operation to get from the whole to whatever the part was. The 100% always corresponds to the whole, right? And then the percent corresponds with the part that you're trying to find. All right, last type of problem. Now we're going to be given a part and a percentage, and we will be asked to find the whole. So we have these two, we want to find that one. All right, let me think of another. Okay. Here's another question, and I'm going to just set up my double number line right off the bat so I can write out the information as I'm explaining it. All right, there are 15, and here's a part I'm giving you, so I'm going to just mark it. There are 15 girls on the soccer team. This represents 20% of the total amount of players on the soccer team. How many players are there all together on the soccer team? Okay, we have a part, 15 girls on the soccer team. And there's more people than just 15. This is just a part of it. So I guess the remainder are, you know, boys. And then on the bottom here, I'm representing that this is only 20% of the entire soccer team. Okay, now this looks pretty sparse, but what other information can we fill in? Well, we know that, you know, this is the zero people. I'm gonna just put PP upper people. This is also 0%. And then we also know that over here we've got 100%. Okay, our goal is that hole over there. What is this hole? That's what we're trying to find. Now, you see there's a link between the percent on the bottom. And remember, if we want to get from 20% to 100%, it's better if we do multiplication or division because that way we can multiply or divide by the same number on the top of the number line. So let's see, how do we get from 20, which corresponds with 15, to 100, which corresponds with our missing number? 20 times 5 would equal 100. And so we can do that same operation on top, times 5. 15 times 5 is 75. So we know that there are 75 people on the soccer team. It's a very large soccer team. Don't think I thought about that before I made this problem. Okay, so now you see that whatever information they give us, we can fill in in a double number line and then use multiplication or division to get from one value to the other and then do the same on the top or the bottom to um, get to that corresponding value. So because we're going from 20 to 100%, we also know that there's the same relationship of point, uh, times 5 between 15 and the whole, because those are corresponding. 15 goes with 20%, the whole goes with 100%. The first method we did um, was to break up the number line into equal pieces and then label all of those. That is a perfectly fine method as well. But for when you're working with bigger numbers that you don't necessarily want to have to divide into tiny little pieces, like, a, you know, you want, don't want to go like 100 into 5% at a time, that would be like 20 different markers, and that's a lot. It's really easy just to multiply or divide to get from one point to the other on a double number line. So I hope that helps you. And if you have any questions, as always, you can email me or just ask me in class.